in the pretty near future I'll be doing an AM5 PC build and this is the motherboard I decided to go with. This was the best bang for buck that motherboard I could get and it came in a package deal um, where I'm in Canada I don't have the luxury of going down to like micro center or something like that that has a pretty robust um, inventory of PC parts that are usually uh, a good deal um, with Amazon the prices aren't that great so I found that Canada computer had the best deal where I got the 7900X and this motherboard for I think it was a combined total of $800, which in the U.S. might seem expensive, but when you convert it over to freaking Canadian funny money, uh, it's not that bad of a deal. Because right now the board or the CPU alone is going for about $590, and this board is like $370 or $380. So combined, we're talking $950, and I got it for around $800. So. Uh, that was pretty much the driving point um, for getting this. And it's not the only reason though, because there was a couple other boards packaged with it for around the same price, but this seemed to be the most robust and best board at that price point. Uh, so I got it. Um, doing some research, I don't feel like I made a mistake in getting this motherboard. We'll find out once I build it and start testing it and whatnot. But from what I found, it a feature set it's pretty on par with everything else and uh, the construction of it seems to be a pretty um, pretty quality build anyway when I'll talk more about that um, after we get it open and take a look at it it's kind of in here pretty snug it probably isn't a bad thing. There's the board. Ooh, that's the back. What else do we get? What do we get? We got a... That's not even a user manual. That's a... Warranty? What is this? Regulatory notice. Um, installing the CPU. Uh, that is a lot of BS. And we got a nice little... Sticker badge, anything? Anything. Are you not? Okay. Well, at least they did include the antenna. That's a, a good start. And, oh, this is kind of a nice touch. I'm not exactly sure. It's got all the power cables, but I'm not for the. Uh, um, the case I/O to connect to to get your LED power reset, but I've never seen this. Like, can you just slide all those connectors in here first and just slide it right onto the motherboard, or how does that work? I'm not sure. Got a couple of we got a riser and a screw. I'm assuming for one of the NVMe. Um, components and a couple set up data connect connectors um, okay so that's kind of disappointing that it does not have a physical copy of the manual that uh, that's always nice to have I kind of find it annoying having to go and bring it up off their website every time that's not going to be overly fun anyway let's open this up very heavy it has got a massive heat sink on top of the VRM. So I'm really gonna get my ass to act together and do the build because I'm running up <laughs> on the return period and if I don't do it anytime soon and there's an issue I'll have to deal with the manufacturer instead of sending it back to the retailer. So on the rear I.O. you have uh, which is a nice feature called Q-Flash so you can update your BIOS without 
a CPU, video card, or RAM being installed. Uh, there's instructions on the website how to go through that, but that's a nice touch. Uh, I'm assuming if your BIOS somehow gets corrupted or anything like that, you'll be able to use the Q Flash to, you know, be able to fix that. We got the uh, wireless connector, so uh, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth. It does come with a single HDMI output. That's because AM5 CPUs now have um, integrated graphics. Oddly enough, the B650 has HDMI and display port out, so I don't know why this only has HDMI. Comes with four um, USB 2.0, which is, there's a lot of uh, USB and one USB connector. I think it's with four, eight, 12 USB ports and one USB C, which is nice. So, four of them are USB 2.0. Six of them are USB 3.2 Gen 1, and then two of them are USB 3.2 Gen 2, and then the USB-C uh, connector as well. And one of the USB 3.2 Gen 2 is the uh, BIOS flash, uh, flashback uh, port. And then we have uh, 2.5 gigabit internet and our audio. So let's do a top-down uh, angle to give us a better, well, give you guys a better look at the board. So starting off, underneath this big chunk of metal, which is the heat sink with massive fins and space in there, is the board's VRM. It has a 16 plus 2 plus 2 design. It's not a true 16 design, it's an 8 plus 8 VRM design, which means that at any given moment, two are running in parallel for the VRMs. Where it comes to power management on this, it's more than enough for any of the 7000 series CPUs. Uh, where you'll run into an issue is if you decide to overclock, when you start overclocking using an increased voltage, that increased voltage might become unstable. There could be some instability. And if you go over to Bill Zoid's YouTube channel, he does a great job of explaining uh, for the specific board the VRM layout and how that can cause some issues uh, with voltages based on the VRM design. But for your everyday person that's going to be using this, there shouldn't be any issues with any of the CPUs. Uh, running them full out like a 7950X, the VRM should handle that power management, power draw, no problem. It also has two 8-pin connectors, which seems a little bit overkill uh, for this, but if you do plan on overclocking, that extra pin even then is probably more than what you would need. It has dual channel, four slots for DDR5 RAM, of course, it's got the new uh, AM5 LGA layout. We have four M.2 NVMe connectors. Uh, the first one is PCIe 5.0. The other three are only PCIe 4. Uh, that comes with uh, Gigabyte's neat little easy um, connector for your uh, for your graphics card. This is a PCIe 4.0 16 lane slot. This is a PCIe oh, let's move that up a bit. This is a PCIe 4.0 4 lane slot and this is a PCIe 3.0 2 lane slot. This is in my opinion pretty useless. However, you only get four SATA connectors uh, on this board. Let's see, can you see them right there? Yeah, you only get four. So the only thing I can really see a use for this for is to put a SATA card in there to expand the number of connectors that you have. Another nice thing is that for the M.2 slots, it's got like quick release latch. You don't have to worry about trying to screw in a screw. You just pop it in there and push down and you're good to go. The PCIe, 
yeah, the PCIe or not PCIe, the NVMe, uh, yeah, PCIe 5.0 slot has its own heatsink uh, to go over the the drive, and then the rest over here has its own heatsink as well to cover the three all in one. Moving on to the different connectors, you have your CPU fan connector, the um, AIO pump, we have RGB connectors. The more interesting things to point out is that we have a power button right here and we have a reset button that can be reprogrammed within the BIOS to do other various things. It doesn't have an error code. All it has is four LED lights over here for CPU, RAM, uh, boot, and VGA, so you don't actually get uh, a code to kind of determine what the issue is. You just have to go based on the light and figure it out from there. We got USB-C uh, front connector. Uh, we got some USB 3.2 connectors and 2.0 connectors. I think this is a USB 3.2 connector here. Another interesting thing is we have a CMOS clear button, which is fantastic. Um, it does right above it have the two pins that you can short to clear your CMOS and you have your buttons. And nothing too exotic. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It does have your revision number down here to let you know what revision, what version of the board you you have. Aside from that, there's not much outside of what your normal board would have. Uh, you got your front power button, reset button, switch, uh, connectors here. There are five um, system fan connectors along the board. Not much else. Uh, the the audio codec that comes with it, for the amount you're paying for this board, it's pretty low end. However, I don't know. From my point of view, I don't think anyone except an audio file would probably be able to tell the difference. But uh, that if that's one thing that is you know important to you, is to have you know the best audio codec. This is not it. It doesn't really tell you anywhere, at least that I could find on their website, what it is. I'm sure if you can look up the uh, the chip number, it would tell you. But I think it's similar to what um, ASRock uses in most of their boards. And that's pretty much the lowdown of the board. Yeah, the biggest takeaway is it's got a PCIe 5.0 slot, three NVMe drives, and these are not full um, 16 lane slots. That's a four lane PCIe 4.0, and that's a two lane PCIe 3.0. So running all core on Cinebench R23 for nearing an hour, so I can get the everything nice and hot. As you can see up here, the CPU is actually nearing 95 degrees because at the moment I'm just using a air cooler on it. Uh, so it was running, everything got nice and hot. The VRMs were hovering around 41 degrees Celsius. They were not getting hot at all. Uh, this is going based off of the sensors in the motherboard. So I did the old fashioned, let's just touch the heat sink and see what that feels like. And they were very cool to the touch. So this just goes to show you that the VRMs are more than capable of handling uh, the, the the draw power from the 7900X without overheating or anything like that.